So um, it's my honor tonight to introduce um, uh, a topic that is going to be very important to Clark College and is important. And about four and a half years ago, we received a grant from Achieving the Dream. And that led us down a path towards really exploring how we support our lowest income students. And um, looking at training, looking at development, looking at um, what services and supports we provide students that can be successful here. And I think we've come a long way in those four and a half, five years that we've been doing this work. Um, that is not only, that work led to, partially to the development of our food pantry, which we celebrated our first year. Um, but also in emergency loans and grants to students and helping to support students in many ways. So our student speaker tonight will uh, be able to share part of her story. Um, but uh, a key component of the work that we've done in this last year, and I attribute a lot of the success to Armeta Bernie, who will come up and introduce our student, but Armeta, if you want to come up, is around our housing supports and uh, the work that we do to help students from becoming homeless. And so Armeta has led uh, an effort in grant writing um, in support of that work, and um, I will let Armeta talk about that and also to introduce our student speaker tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Armetta Bernie. Um, I am the Director of Workforce Education Services here at Clark. And um, in that department, we have the great opportunity to really provide a variety of supports to students, from academic advising to um, helping connect students to resources to um, helping them gain access to public benefits to um, helping to provide them with connections to housing supports. Um, and to just really be a listening ear. And so um, about three years ago, um, we had a student visit our office who had a variety of concerns. And as many of you know, we see students every single day that carry such a weight on, our, on their shoulders, and we have no idea the kinds of things that they're facing. And so our student, Patty Jeffers, who's going to be speaking with you in just a moment, um, she was one of those students that carried so much weight on her shoulders, but you know what she did? She continued to persevere. She continued to have a strong desire to achieve every single goal that she established for herself. And so one of the things that we did, along with others in my office, is we were a listening ear for Patty. Whenever Patty came into our office to say, hey, I'm struggling with this, Hey, can you connect me to this resource? Hey, I just want to tell you how I'm doing. We were there, we were her cheerleaders, we were there to support her every step of the way. And so one of the things that we were able to do just recently was to um, become a part of a housing consortium where Clark has the opportunity to um, be a direct <coughs> referral for students who are at risk of homelessness or who are couch surfing. And so um, Patty's going to be able to share with you how that program provided her with some support. And so I just want to say one more thing about, about Patty. Um, I asked my staff, if you could describe Patty, what would be some of the words you would use? And so I heard persistent, a ball of positive energy, self-determined, precise about what she wanted to do, resilient, and Patty is a fighter. And so I'd like to have Patty come on up. But I think this is better. I think so. I just don't, just don't get too close to it. No, no, I mean around. Yeah, put it in front of there. Move the other one out of the way. Yeah, put it in I just wanted to say hello, and it's an honor to speak in front of you guys today. Um, first of all, that I was even asked to speak in front of you guys, because I didn't think my story was that special. Um, for those of you that I haven't had the honor of meeting, my name is Patty Nadjip Jeffers. And uh, I just, uh, I'm proud to say I completed my college career here at Clark College. Um, I received in June, I got to shake his hand with my certificate of proficiency as a pharmacy technician. And um, I, winter quarter, I completed the final credits 
for me to finish my associate's degree for pharmacy technician leadership. Yes, and um, I, I can say that it's been a long road um, to this point in my journey, but in order for you guys to better understand the significance that Clark College has played in my life, I need to give you some backstory. So I apologize if I run long. I tend to talk a lot, so you can cut me off at any time. Um, I am 48 years old, and I'm considered a mature learner, I discovered. <laughs> what does that make me? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just letting you know I've never been labeled mature learner, but whatever. Um, it's not my first time going to college. Um, straight out of high school, I graduated in, uh, from Columbia River High School at 89. I went straight to the Art Institute of Seattle in, um, and received my associate's degree of applied arts in fashion marketing and design. Um, I returned to Vancouver after that and with minimal job opportunities, no direction, and no assistance from my school. Um, it happened to be good timing because my mom ran a small business here in the community for about 20 years. Um, it was a production sewing business. She needed my help. She was going through a divorce and she needed my assistance. And uh, I ended up running her business for 10 years. Everything from delivering to payroll to Deliveries, I mean, I did everything so she could handle what she needed to handle in her life. Um, in, in the year 2000, I got married, I bought a house, and I gave birth to the most beautiful baby boy you've ever seen in your life, all within a year. Um, I was a self-proclaimed super mom for about 12 years um, until I finally stood up for myself for the very first time in my entire life, and I asked my husband for a divorce. I wasn't happy. Um, I was working full time, I cleaned, cooked, um, I volunteered at my son's school, I made sure he was at soccer practice, I gave scrapbooking classes, I planned themed birthday parties, um, all with little emotional support from my husband. Um, I felt like a roommate and not a wife. It's not that he's a bad guy, I'm not down talking to my, hus my ex-husband, he just wasn't my guy. And so I decided to stand up for myself because I wanted to show my son what true happiness was supposed to look like. Um, my son and I moved out um, because my ex couldn't um, accept my decision because he didn't do anything wrong, and, but he just couldn't hear me. And um, I managed, we managed to maintain a kind of a cordial relationship in, in order for my son, we uh, shared Custody. I had him four nights a week. He had him three nights a week. Um, that was until um, six or seven months after my separation, I reconnected with an old classmate of mine um, on Facebook, of all places. But I've gone to school with him since the fifth grade and fell madly in love with him. Um, he was a great dad to my son. He got on the floor, played Legos, did dance moves with dance party. He even talked to him with him about girls. Something that his dad didn't give him a lot of that kind of support. He put him in front of a movie or a computer and kind of considered that being a dad. Well, we didn't do it like that at our house. And uh, that was really, really good until he went home one weekend and said, hey dad, have you met mom's new friend? He's really cool, I want you to meet him. Two weeks later, my son was stolen from me. Legally through the courts, but he was stolen from me nonetheless. Um, I couldn't believe at that point that the man that I married could ever doubt my decisions in being a good mom. Um, it was uh, fueled by jealousy and ignorance on his part and uh, lack of consideration for the best interests of my son. Um, being a mom was the only thing I was ever, I am proud to be called. I could care less, whatever other title you want to call me, but being mom is my most important title. Um, and I got that ripped away without any regards to input on my side. Um, it set me into a deep whirlwind depression, and I still fight for him every single day. Um, my family didn't have the resources um, to help me fight the legal system. 
or to provide much emotional support because they didn't understand either. And uh, I spent a, uh, spent about a year barely getting out of bed and lost my house in the process. Sorry, you guys, I'm trying to hard to get through. <laughs> but uh, um, that put me as homeless and I was feeling sorry for myself and at that point blaming everybody else um, for the undescribable pain that I was feeling. I didn't know where to start the process of getting my son back. I didn't know how to do it. Just the thought of my son not being with me was enough. I just shut down. Um, I finally woke up one day and I'd had enough. I uh, decided to make a plan to get back on my feet so I could get my son back. Um, I, uh, that included, um, I had to get a job in, that is respectable in the eyes of the court um, and a wage where I could so support my son and I comfortably. Um, but I also had some personal requirements of the job that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I wanted to be able to help people and I also um, wanted to have a job where I could leave my work at home, or leave my work at work, so I could be completely present at home with my son for every moment that I had with him. So I started my research. Um, because my unemployment ran out, um, I was also um, part of the worker retraining, um, BFED office, I had to do research. In order to get my schooling paid for, I needed to be, um, pursuing a career that was um, increasing openings and jobs and stable <coughs> financially. So um, I know I couldn't be a nurse because I couldn't do all that blood and stuff. So I decided pharmacy technician, I can still make a difference in people's lives. I can be a part of their healthcare team and I can make a difference. Um, it would also allow me to make enough money to avoid, um, to have the simple things with my son. Um, so that's where I came to Clark College. I did my research, I found out Clark College was the number one program for pharmacy technicians. And just so happens it was less than a mile from my house. Um, through the advising office and BFET, worker retraining, she's not here because she had to leave, but I met my angel. Um, and in case any of you don't know who that is, her name is Angelica, and she was the first person that crossed my path in the BFED office. Um, I have described her as my angel because she is the reason she was sitting on my shoulder the entire time. She has saved me everything from a flash drive when I lost mine for my computer class to um, getting a discount on getting my car fixed because it broke down to... Um, Penguin Pantry, uh, my immunizations for the pharmacy technician program. I mean, if I put something out there, they were there on top of it. I mean, she even searched Craigslist for listings for homes for me and forwarded them to me. I mean, <coughs> she was truly my angel. Um, she also was my confidant because she's the one person I could look in her eyes, I could tell her my story, and I knew I wasn't being judged. And um, she had my best interests at heart, even when I forgot what I was fighting for. And uh, Angelica, Kevin, Armeda, Amanda, Tatiana, and many others are people that made my college experience doable, to say the least. Um, they made sure I had all the tools I needed to make it through my college career and to keep fighting the good fight. It took me two and a half years to complete my degree, but I did it completely houseless. I was couch surfing. Um, I lived in a little 20 foot trailer on a relative's property for a while with no running water. Um, they, I fought battles every day coming to school that people took for granted. Um, I, they got, um, the BFED office got me a gym membership so I could have a shower every day if I wanted it. Um, the Penguin Pantry helped me with food and snacks, bottles of water. Um, the Health and Wellness Center helped me with um, the immunizations that I needed in order to start my pharmacy technician program and work in my externships 
that are required to achieve my certificate. Um, career services even had um, a day where they provided free clothing for people that needed um, professional attire for interviews and such. I mean, it included everything down to jewelry. I can't tell you the difference it made when I did walk into my interview knowing that I felt good in my clothes and I didn't feel like I had just packed a bag to get ready to go or showered in a gym bathroom. Um, I also used Ed Dawson, and I'm currently using Ed Dawson. He is um, amazing in the free legal department. Um, he's actually helping me start the process in legally obtaining my son back. Um, it was exhausting uh, maintaining my schoolwork and not having a place to call home. But um, I had to pack a bag for everything from homework to showering to laundry. Everything I had to do, I had to pack to go somewhere to do it. And in the last quarter of the program, the Beef Ed Office informed me about the Homelessness Prevention Program that had just started and encouraged me to apply. And uh, I did. I was pretty persistent about it. And um, I went through all the interviews, all the hoops, the meetings. Um, part of the uh, receiving the money for the grant, um, I didn't have a home, so I was, they were going to help me with the initial cost of getting into a home as long as I was able to afford it um, thereafter, which I walked across the stage in June. I had two job offers um, in my field, and um, I got a job offer um, about the time I found the place that was in the city limits. Um, the manager of Ashley Terrace Apartments was very um, open and loving to the idea that I, she got to help me with my fresh start. And um, I just have to say that um, thank you to the Council for the Homeless, the BFED office, all my new friends and old friends. I have one of my classmates sitting in the audience now. Um, they paid application fees, they paid um, the deposit, the first month's rent, which actually ended up being about five weeks of rent for me, and, and it came out to about $2,800 that they spent on me. And um, I just needed that one thing in order to um, build the foundation to get my life back together. And Clark College, I want to thank everybody here because you guys are responsible for that. Um, I know there's so much more I want to say and I need to be quiet, but um, I have to tell you, I was featured in an article in the Columbia newspaper about receiving the grant. I don't know if any of you saw it. It was on the front page. My article was bigger than Donald Trump's. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> but um, I do. I have a counter to put my toothbrush on. And I just wanted to thank you. Because my story is not over. It's to be continued. And uh, the gratitude I feel to you guys will that made it all possible will live on forever. So I wanted to thank all you all. So thank you. as a pharmacy technician. Um, I work at Fred Meyer Pharmacy um, um, over on Henderson and Lombard. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and receiving... Um, <laughs> and um, currently I'm um, pursuing my Washington pharmacy technician license. Um, I, I'm licensed in Oregon, but the um, restrictions on Oregon and Washington are slightly different. So I, when I moved into this this job, I they embraced me. Um, they um, decided that 
I was valuable and I felt good in that one. So I didn't really, I kind of, you know, I kind of drug my feet a little bit on pursuing the Washington side because I didn't really think I'd need it. But um, I'm all about opportunity and um, I, don't know, I can't say what's on the horizon, but I know I'm going to be ready for whatever, wherever it brings me. And you need to get your Washington license because if you get a job in Washington, Fred Meyer, you save 9%. I figured it out. They're taking 38% of my, my paycheck right now. And that's, that's probably one of my biggest things because it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. So, yes. And we need over here in this side. Thank you. I actually, I interviewed with two Fred Myers um, within three days of each other. The Hazeldale location wanted me really bad, but I didn't have my Washington license through. And um, Lombard, um, I negotiated starting top of the pay scale right under journeyman. So I'm making more than... Grand Central Fred Meyer is also a good farm. Oh, is that good? <laughs> oh, maybe I'll charge for that. Sounds great, yeah. that's mine. Are you all that happy? You're just going to have to find a location. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two, two people here. Okay, okay. so I'm free. I'll never do it. Thank you for sharing your story. It uh, touches our hearts, and I'm encouraged um, for you. And I know I can see the determination and the persistence here at, in your voice. You're going to be okay, oh, and um, and it, life is it fair or easy? And you um, you came through like a champ. And thank you for sharing with us. It inspires. Us. I think it's, God put me here for a reason, and I think that reason was to see where people need help and. Now that I am able and I've made it this far in my journey, I've done opening doors for people that might otherwise stay closed because they're afraid to tell their story. So if I can inspire one person to keep going, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> so thank you.